They went away in a boat to a deserted place. We hear that the people recognize the disciples. And then we hear later in the gospel that they recognized Jesus. They recognized them. And they hurried and rushed to follow them on foot from here and there, from every surrounding area. They went to find the disciples. They went to find Jesus. And what were they looking for? What was their desperation? We hear also in the scriptures that Jesus had compassion on them because they were like a shepherd. They were like sheep without a shepherd. They had no leader. And yet they saw and heard that Jesus was possibly that person that answer to their prayers. And at the beginning of the gospel reading this morning, we hear that the gospels are just back from their first mission trip. They are first back from being out in the world of teaching and preaching and healing. And from the sound of it, it had gone well. They were excited. We could even say, perhaps, we get our imaginations, they were on fire with the gospel. The gospel message was beginning to just explode everywhere. Because with God, anything is possible. And Jesus was living and teaching and healing what God had called him to do. And he was passing that on to the disciples as God had called Jesus to teach them, and God had called them to do. And they came back, and they were all excited. They were like, we have, we have all these programs. We have got programs to start. Let me tell you about the programs. There are committees, and there are going to be so many committees come September, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. People are going to be on Zoom, and people are going to be in person, and we're going to be feeding the poor and helping the veterans, and we are going to help every marginalized person that feels on the outside, and we are all going to do it. We are going to do it, and we are going to start it all right now. My senior warden is howling right now. <laughs> and Jesus looks at him and goes, whoa, let's just take a breath. But no, you don't understand. Yes, actually, I do. No, no, you don't understand. We only have one window. This is our time. If we don't do it now, it's never going to get done because there have never been as many poor people as there are right now. There have never been as many people that feel marginalized and estranged from God as right now. These are the disciples speaking, just for clarification. This isn't me in 2021, not that we could see any connection. We need to take care of the planet, because did you know that if we do all this, that there are going to be fires all over the world? Did you know, Jesus, that if we don't take care of water, there's going to be erosion? It is going to Jesus, it is all going to turn to, you know. Okay, Jesus says, it sounds like you had a good trip. How was your workshop? Did you have a good class? Did you pray a lot? Jesus, you are not listening to us. We have just been through a pandemic. We need to be on fire for the gospel. fire for the gospel. You sound very on fire for the gospel right now. So let's all just get in this boat and let's go take a break. And off goes Jesus. And can you imagine the meeting that was happening behind Jesus' back? He is not listening. 
He got us started, but I'm not sure he understands one bit about the needs that we have to boot right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Jesus. Jesus said, let's just get in a boat and let's go off by ourselves for a little while and let's perhaps get some rest. Because rest, if we look in the scriptures, rest starts in Genesis. It feels very selfish, doesn't it? If you grew up in a family like mine, or if you grew up in a church, or if you grew up in all kinds of different places, the only time you got to rest was really after the work got done. And yet in the church, in the work of Christ, the work never gets done. For many of us in our homes, the work never gets done. So rest, what is God talking about when God says, and then rest? And why on earth is it in Genesis at the beginning of Scripture when there is so much work to be done? There are so many pews to be filled. There are so many church budgets to balance. And Jesus is talking about rest in Genesis, oh, not Jesus, God is talking about rest in Genesis. What are we being called to do? You know me, I'm exaggerating because I'm a drama queen. But what I know is that we all, so many of us, for all the right reasons, want so much to just find out what's God calling us to do and do it. And then if we find something and we get on fire with it, as we all do, then it's like, well, we must hurry. And somewhere in there, we become the solution. And ah, God must have known that little turtle, because none of us are the solution. We're not the solution. God is the solution. So how is it that we find ways to be the agents that God needs us to be in 2021, which are so ironically the similar, so ironically similar as the ones that the disciples were given, were called to care and take time and pray with God. You know, rest isn't just like recovering from work. When people talk about Sabbath, they talk about Sabbath, but Sabbath is also a little different than rest because if you've worked all day, then you need to rest. But Sabbath is being able to have time to be, be able to have time to pray, perhaps, have time to write or reflect. We think that if we're going to do something, we have to be thinking about it really, really hard. Remember years ago when I was trying to learn to get some kind of discipline around my writing, it was a wonderful book, which I'm sure many of you read by Anne Lamont. It's called Bird by Bird. And it's actually her, one of her earlier books. And it's not so much about some of the stuff she talks about today. It's supposed to be a writing book, but it's a life book. And she talks about taking things in chunks, little bits. She talks about it never, not having to be perfect. She talks about sometimes having to go for a walk and walk away. Just press delete. So if we were going to think about the summer, if we were going to think about this opportunity, because we do need to recharge. Even if you're a person that lives alone, even if you're a person that doesn't see yourself as a busy, busy beaver, the truth of the matter is we are God willing coming out of a pandemic where we've all been hyper vigilant when we didn't even know it. We have been hyper vigilant, just making sure that our decisions were correct. Some of us in leadership more so than others. But it doesn't matter where you've been. Early on, remember, where do I put my groceries? Do I spray them down? Do I leave them on the porch? That feels like a lifetime ago now, but it wasn't that long ago. Remember when we first started looking up and seeing people with masks on? We thought, my God, this is, and 
now it's all, now it's all the opposite kind of. It's we how is it that we how is it that we have managed? We have managed, we are here, so we have managed. So now we're at that hypervigilance. It's kind of like we're getting to stretch out our shoulders a little bit, getting to breathe a little bit, we're getting to go on vacations, maybe, we're getting to, we're getting to breathe. Everything we do doesn't have to be a plan. So how is it that we find a way to breathe into that? One of the things is by thinking about all the ways that God gets to encourage us to have fun. You know, one of the things we hear over and over again is in Luke it says, consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Have you gone for a walk, maybe? Maybe and look at some of the flowers. I look at Facebook, I see a lot of you. I think you're growing some of your own flowers in your own garden. I know it's one of the things I've found over the last couple of years that gives me tremendous peace. And I look out and I see the colors. When I can stop and be present, especially Catherine and I were talking the other day, some of the day lilies, and just look at the different colors. Go for a walk, it's free. If you're ever in Portsmouth, walk through the gardens, it's free. And it's like this most beautiful, majestic painting. It's free. And you know what I can tell you? Is when you get home, something will change. You'll feel different, it's weird. But try it, it's really worth the medicine. Listen to some of your favorite music. I'm one of those weird ones that wears the earbuds. Some of you have walked in in the morning or I'm here and I've got my earbuds on and I'm, what do you do? Listen to your favorite music. Put your earbuds in and listen and just let it change you. Let us get in a boat, kind of all by ourselves. Let us know we have to get so hard. Yes, we definitely need to be more people. But if we find ways, if we find ways to feed our soul, somehow or other, one of the things that gets missed in this is that first it says they recognized the disciples. Then it says, they recognized Jesus. You know, in 12-step programs, we talk about being a, a program, a power of example, or being a program of attraction. What would it be like if loving God was a program of attraction? If being Christian, if somebody said, just maybe they'd been with you, maybe at work or in another meeting or somewhere, and they said, geez, you know, just seem like you, you just seem like a happy person. And maybe when I'm shoving the Bible down their throat, you might say, well, you know, I'm just really grateful. I'm grateful for another day. And you're, what are you grateful for? Well, God gave me another day. God who? But they recognized you. I bet some of you have had that experience. They recognized the disciples because it wasn't just that they were healing and teaching and preaching, because those are obvious. You know, when I come into a place and I've got my collar on and I'm dressed up in my religious clothes, people have got a clue that I have some at least overt connection to God. At least I'm supposed to say all the right things dressed like this, right? But if they don't even talk to me any other time during the week, then I don't want to wear these clothes. People say to me sometimes, you don't, you don't wear your collar. It's like, you don't want to talk to me without my collar. We have a much bigger problem with my collar. So my plea for you today is on this, even though it's a rainy day, you know, one of the things I did during the pandemic is I started taking these YouTube classes, yes, on watercolor painting. I have always loved to paint, do watercolor painting, always loved to. 
And I've always traveled hither and yon to take classes, but you know what? I couldn't travel hither and yon. Hither and yon came to me. It's awesome. What calls you? Because you know what? You get up, I get up from doing something like that, from practicing my piano, which I would never do in public because it's just, uh, you know, it's my prayer time, but it would feel like Good Friday to all of you. But all of that said, what do you do that feeds you? Because all of a sudden you'll find yourself, then you notice the guy on the street. I'll say to myself, you know, I'll be all running around, I'm all burnt out, what's wrong with me? I've got to get my act together, slow down, do all the things I tell you to do. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, Dover's got all these cool programs. Maybe we don't need to have another meeting. Maybe we need to communicate. Huh. The disciples said, maybe you should go get in the boat. So on this day, it is a rainy day, but it is a beautiful day if we're here. It's a beautiful day if we're able to find ourselves here in this beautiful space. It's a beautiful day if you have a computer and you get to join us and you get to be cool. I have some inappropriate envy of that right now. So I hope you're cool. And we all get to worship God in whatever way God calls us. And at the end of the day, let us notice. Let us notice the color and the lilies or the sparkle in somebody's eyes. Or maybe you're not ready to throttle the person in front of you in line at Hannaford. That's another sign of self-care. If all of a sudden that person gets to have a few extra minutes because they don't know how to use the computer system and you're just either helpful or kind, and not wanting to say some of the things that might run through some of the smiles that I'm seeing out here. Self-care manifests itself in a way where it's not selfish. But we're not the solution. We're one part of God's kingdom. Let us find a way to find the color in our day. On this day. And if you want to start a committee in September, Kevin. <laughs>